Hi everyone. I'm sorry we, I, that I haven't posted in a while, but today we're going to be doing some, we're going to be talking about the SAT. So in this video, we're going to be talking about what the SAT is, the calculator and the no calculator section, what topics the SAT covers, and some ways, uh, some strategies that you can use to get a higher score on your SAT. Now, even if you're just watching this video for fun, or if you're even here to prepare for the SAT, I think this is a great way to get yourself um, familiar with the SAT. So before we start, I'd like to talk about a few, uh, something that you could do to um, not just on the SAT, on pretty much any test, you can use this strategy to score higher. So the strategy I'm talking about is ballparking. So whenever you have an MCQ, meaning a, multi uh, a, multiple, a multiple choice question, then there are usually four or five options that you, um, to, uh, that you have that you're given and you have to, and you have to choose the right answer to the, an to the question. So what ballparking is, is that if you're given uh, a few choices, let's say, um, a, B, and C, or D. So these four uh, options. Now, ballparking is when you eliminate. So ballparking is basically em elimination. And you eliminate the choices until you have one or two choices left. So you don't have a bunch of options to confuse you. So you usually eliminate when the answer is to big or small, um, when the answer doesn't make sense, so like maybe a different unit or um, something like that, or when the answer just isn't in the ballpark, so that means it just doesn't go well with the question. So let's say A was way too big and C just didn't make sense. It wasn't in the ballpark. So now you're left with two choices. That is B or D. And that uh, saves you from a lot of confusion because looking at A, B, C, and D, you could get confused looking at which one it could be. So just to slow down um, your procedure, I mean, just to speed up your procedure, you should ballpark just so that you can get a quicker answer. So before we start, let's do a quick warm up. So these are sample questions for the SAT. Uh, questions like these may appear in the SAT. So I would advise you to prepare for questions like this. So Joy plants three rows of corn in our garden. The row on the south edge of the garden receives more sunlight than the row on the north edge. Therefore, the corn on the north edge is 30% shorter than that on the south edge. If the corn south is 50 inches tall, how tall is the corn on the north edge in inches? So before we start, let's just cross out some information that we don't need and highlight some information that would come in useful. So Joy plants three rows of corn in her garden. This doesn't really, um, this isn't really needed. So I'm going to go ahead and cross that out with red. The row on the south edge of the garden receives more sunlight than the row on the north edge. This isn't really necessary, but I'm going to leave it. Uh, if, okay, so what we uh, would need is the corn on the north edge is 30% shorter than that on the south edge. This seems important, so I'm going to underline it. Okay, if the corn south is 50 inches tall, how tall is the corn on the north edge? So we know that the corn south is 50 inches tall. So I'm going to go ahead and cross everything else out. Now, if you look at it, the question looks way more easier to solve because now all we have to 
uh, all we need is that the corn on the north edge is 30% shorter than that on the south edge, and the, uh, the corn south is 50 inches tall. So now using our ballparking strategy, let's see which answers don't make sense. If you look at it, 65 really doesn't make sense because it goes in the wrong direction. Uh, the corn on the north edge is shorter than the one on the south, not l taller. So 65 doesn't make sense it's because it's too big. Now, 30 seems way too small because that's 60% of 50 in inches. So that also wouldn't make sense. So now we have these two left. So which one is the answer? So let's perform the final operation, which is 50, uh, which uh, we need to find 30% of 50 inches. So that's the same as multiplying 50 by 0.3. So 50 times 0.3 gives us 15. So our answer must be 50 minus 15, which gives us 35. So the answer is C. Now our next question, if 16 minus, if 16 X minus two is equals to 30, what is the value of eight X minus four? So um, over here, there's not much crossing out to do. So let's just focus on the equation. 16x minus 2 is equals to 30. And we want to find 8x minus 4, not the value of x. We need, uh, you need to make sure that you are looking for the correct answer because then you can fall for trap answers. So we need to, we, we've been given that 16x minus 2 gives us 30. So what is 8x minus 4? So taking our equation, which is 16x minus 2 is equals to 30, if we divide both sides by 2, that gives us 8x minus 1 is equals to 15. So 15 really doesn't make sense because, well, half of, six, uh, half of the answer is 15, and that ignores the minus 4. And then looking at the 28, that's way too big. So, so we cross out the 28, and, um, and we also cross out the 15, because 15 doesn't make sense, and 28 is way too big. Now, you could, and if you think about it, 2 is also way too small, because x can't be 2. Uh, I mean, it can be 2. So, let's see what the answer is. 8x minus 1 gives us 15, hence 8x is equals to 16. So that means x is equals to 2, but we're not given, we aren't given to find the answer of x. We need to find the value of 8x minus 4. So we also cross out 2 because that's a trap answer. So the answer has to be a, which is 12. Now let's talk about the uh, what topics are being covered in the SAT. So there are four topics in the SAT. The Heart of Algebra, Passport to Advanced Math, Problem Solving and Data Analysis, and Additional Topics. So these are just some cleverly named categories, but in real life, what's going to be tested is Algebra 1 and 2, Um, uh, arithmetic, probability, and data analysis. And lastly, there's going to be, um, some geometry, uh, like plane or coordinate geometry. and trigonometry. So we aren't gonna be going through all of these topics in one video, um, but I do have a few videos on uh, algebra 
and geometry i solved a lot of problems in geometry so be sure to check those out too um so what we're going to be doing now is we're going to talk about algebra first of all so in algebra uh, a mistake a lot of people do is they forget about bed mass or pemdas so make sure you don't make a silly mistake remember pemdas or bed mass so if you're like most students uh you probably really didn't pay a lot of attention to these topics since junior high school school but um just to remind you pemdas stands for parenthesis Uh, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and lastly, subtraction. Now, I have a video on bed mass too, so be sure to check that out too. So parenthesis is basically curly brackets, large brackets, or small brackets. Exponents is when you raise a power to a number, such as x, x squared, x raised to the power two, x cubed, x raised to the power three, or x raised to the power y. Multiplication is when you times the number by something, or maybe like a, b, x, y. Division is the division symbol or fractions. Addition is usually just shown with a plus and subtraction, again, only with a, a subtraction with the minus sign. So um, bed mass, PEMDAS and bed mass are pretty much the same thing, except um, a small, there's a small change. So they call it parenthesis brackets exponents is the same and then they have division before multiplication doesn't really matter which order you do division and multiplication in because they're still going to be the same but in addition and subtraction again it's the same but just for pronunciation um just so that you can pronounce it they usually have addition before subtraction So brackets is, again, curly brackets, large brackets, or small brackets. Exponents is raising a number to a power. Division is the division symbol or fractions. Multiplication is the time symbol or just two variables next to each other. Addition is plus sign and subtraction is minus. So uh, we have a, um, a, a cool mem uh, a mnemonic that you can use so that you don't forget this. And um, the mnemonic is please, oh, um, I'll write that in here. Please excuse my dear aunt Sally. So um, this is like a, a funny sentence that you can remember so that you don't forget PEMDAS because if you look at it, it has P-E-M-D-A-S, which spells out PEMDAS. And there's a little line that you can add at the end. She limps from left to right so just so you remember it goes left to right and not right to left so uh we're gonna uh so that's pretty much it thank you for watching this video and um please be uh, be sure to check out our other videos um this is going to be a series i'm gonna upload some more 
uh, videos on the SAT, so be sure to check those out too. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you're walking away with a, bit, a little bit more knowledge with the SAT. Thanks for watching.